couple of minutes after six. On uh, oh, who can believe it's August? August twenty second. Um, as I say, changes to the agenda right now. Four would need to go to executive. I think we might well. I think five and six are things that everybody needs to be here to talk about. We can we can start talking about them, but it's a. Uh, there's the green, there's the scanner, there's an admissions agreement. Okay, uh, that makes it look more reasonable. Yeah, it should go quick so, now. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> we take three of the big issues off, it won't take one. Yep. Uh, so we have, yeah, you want comment. you want to talk to us, okay? Public yeah. comment, right? We'll. Let's start the recording. Um, okay, just just a second here and let them let, let Ron get that going and we'll hurt one. Oh boy, I'm really going to be accountable. Uh, <laughs> recording in progress. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi. And introduce yourself. My name is Barbara Potter. I live at 264 Main Street in Hyde Park, Vermont. And um, the I, little house on the corner. No, it's actually one. Some people never see it. They're going by right back. Look, right. Yeah, yeah, it's way yeah. back from yeah. the road. Yeah, yeah. Nice and quiet down there. Um. <clears throat> anyway, I know you hear a lot of complaints, but I noticed something that I really appreciate and an improvement I have seen, and. Uh, so that you know that when you do things that are good, we notice that too. It's not just we do appreciate that. Yep. Yeah. And that is um, the plowing of the street, Main Street in Hyde Park. Um, when I was a kid, I grew up here in the 1950s in the same house. And I remember Mr. Patch, there was a sign up. Yep. yep. He was almost straight up there with God because <laughs> he did such a great job plowing. And um, I think um, things hadn't changed much until, was it Mark Lu Mark Lujulier or? Who was doing it now? No. Or before, um, right. We, we had the same group doing the same thing, I think, forever and never evaluating how well it was working. And it wasn't working well in front of my house. I came back in 1998. And they didn't plow the whole width of the road. They made sure the school kids could get in. And where the main street was, um, you know, just two lanes, that was fine in the parking spots. But in front of my house, the road widens as we had down yeah. Depot Street. Right. And I had to go out and shovel a lane and a half of Road, okay. Road snow. Plus, there's a, you know, you're dealing with the pile that comes from what's out on the road. Plus, the pile from the sidewalk, two piles. And boy, they're doing a dynamite job now. And oh, good. The, the thing was, um, the street lights are on the other side of the street. I'm on the south side. Yep. And so they were working in the shadows, and they couldn't see what they were doing. And they never came back to look at it in the daylight and see how well they had done until uh, I think you guys evaluated and improved things and I appreciate it. That's well, what I need to know. Good. Well, if it gets rotten again, let us know. Don't go out and shovel it yourself. <laughs> Shall I call you? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, absolutely. I'm a, a shy person, but I can be assertive. <laughs> yeah. Consistent, yes. Yeah, no, that's good. I had told Ron that's about basic. it, but that was back when I didn't know that the village did certain things and right. town right. did others. And so, yeah, man, it was, at my age, I really appreciate it. Yeah. All right. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> yes. And I know at my age, I'm not going to go out and trouble like that either. <laughs> so keep up the good work. I think we're coming in, into the 21st century. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. Thank you. Um, 
Well, if you want to go down, if you want to sit through things, you're welcome, Mary, or we'll bounce you up and we can do you now and then you're free to escape and do a pleasant evening. I don't mind. Whatever you guys want. Okay. Um, come on up. Come on up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then if you want to stay, it's of your own volition. Not because okay. we're punishing okay. you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I think you all know that um, it was part of our plan to try and do a herbicide application, just take a few sites and, and do one uh, this year. And I apologize for coming a little bit late to the party on this, but after many conversations with one person at the Department of Ag, is it so so back up there, there's been a change in the regulations um, at regarding herbicides and in particular in relation to invasive plants. And I think most of the change in regulation, which is like back in the winter, has to do with licensing and certification. So right now it's forestry category of herbicide. They they do the, the invasive stuff. They've decided that's not correct. And so they need this licensing specifically for herbicide applications on invasives, I think, or not sure. But anyway, that's the big change, but in it, and it doesn't affect us at all because they're allowing people who have the so-called category two license to continue to treat invasives while they make up their new tests and their new training and everything. Meanwhile, they've also established a new permit requirement which is if you're if you're doing um, right of way treatment for invasives specifically, um, as opposed to the old, I don't even know what it's opposed to, the big right of way treatments that are about safety and clearing right of way for railroads and power and all of that. So they've created this new permit and conversations that I was having with one person suggested for our pilot, we wouldn't need that permit. Fortunately, I had another conversation recently in the nick of time with somebody else who says we do need the permit, which is fine. It's not a big deal. The application is quite straightforward. Ron's seen a draft of it. I've, I've, I've got something ready. And um, uh, so, so that's point number one is I need to file this application as soon as possible. The procedure, they've only one, only one other town has filed an application for this permit. So it's new, I'm not sure exactly what the procedure is, but I do know it has to go posted for 10 days. And if there's any public comment, then they'll address it. If there's no public comment, then I, I mean, they don't have an issue with what we're trying to do, which I hope they won't because the conversation suggested that they wouldn't have uh, uh, any problem with what we're trying to do, um, that we would get the permit. And it's a very tight window here for not we, because you wanna do one late season treatment after flowering, before frost, as soon after flowering, so that you can get the stuff on the plant and then it has time to work its way down into the rhizomes before the frost comes and kills the plant. So um, mid-September is sort of what we're aiming for. And um, yeah, so I've got the application. It's been reviewed by the guy who is, is our licensed applicator. Um, I've spoken to all of the landowners. So there, just to be clear, there are there are eight sites in total. And by my calculation, it's about 0.15 of an acre in total. It's very small. Um, we hope to do foliar spray and some injection. I don't know which at which particular site because it depends a little bit on what we find with the knotweed. The injection is really for us as a thing that we desire to do. The, the, the licensed applicator, Luke is his name, just soon do foliar spray. It's much faster, it's, you know, anyway. So um, yada, yada, yada. Oh, it's a requirement of the permit that we have, and we would want this anyway, written permission of all the landowners. And I will get that before we do any treatment. I've spoken to all the landowners, pretty much everybody except one person has said, yes, no problem. There's one person uh, who may not give us permission, but I've kept them in the application because I, I got to have it some yes. permit. Yeah. It's just a joining landowner that all is, that, so it would only be a body landowner? No, it's not. The, the requirement is just the landowner themselves to, to give written uh, permission. In this, this particular case, two of the sites are basically um, small patches of knotweed on, on each end of a culvert. Okay. And 
they're just ripe to be had because they're small. And when they get big, they'll become a problem when you replace the culvert. And, and at, at least in one of the cases, there'll be visibility issues once they get big and so on. Uh, so one, one person on one end of the culvert just doesn't want to do use chemical, I think. I haven't had the conversation myself, which is why I want to leave it in there because perhaps I've misunderstood, but that's, that's the way it is. Some people. The applicator for like as far as like a distance from a well or anything like that. That's so like the, 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 the requirement of the permit is that um, we we have to follow all the wetland rules. We will use wetland certified labeled herbicide only. It's glyphosate that is labeled to be used near water. Um, and all the wetland, I think the language in here is all the wetland, no, the water, pardon me, I don't know if I heard it. The well water shields will be respected or something to that effect. Yeah. 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 Okay. Potable water well shields will be respected. Okay. Um, one of the, so seven of the sites require the permit because they're in the town right away. One of the sites, and this is another, so one issue for you guys, are you okay that we file the application? I need somebody to sign it. I don't know if it can be Ron or whatever. Um, the second issue is we as a committee really want to get rid of that knotweed that happens to be right out here. Right out here right. Yeah. And it's not really in the right of way. And it's uh, you own the land, so you can treat it. You don't need a permit to do that. So technically, that eighth site is outside the scope of the permit. But we have somebody doing the treatment. We'd like to do it. So we need your permission as the landowner to take right. care of it. And um, so that's an issue for you to uh, decide. And I think that's it. I'll, I'll, make this up. I'll make a motion to allow them to spray on our side. This patch here. This patch here. Right. Adjacent to the park. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Excellent. Great. Aye. Thank you very much. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Um, Spray so away. It turns out there's multiflora rose out there, which is an invasive plant as well. That's well. Uh, I don't know how well glyphosate works yeah. on it. We'll, we'll, I'll work on that. We'll try and clean it up. That's all. I as long as you're following the proper protocols and the chains and respecting the waters. All of all that. that. All of that. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, do you need anything else from me? I know. We have to go I was afraid you'd ask me about that. I came to talk herbicide, but um, well, I could show you a picture. I just stopped. I just passed. All three goats uh, look happy and fine, and they were out chewing, and the knotweed uh, is pretty much consumed. It hasn't gone at the rate that I was hoping that it would go because we only have three goats there, and it's a pretty big space. Right. But um, it's slightly more complicated than that because I, I think the goat – herder has had a problem with the main herd at his home. Yeah. And uh, I'm not in touch with quite how that's resolved itself, but I think it's been a bit traumatic because there were some parasites and there may have been some deaths, I think. Yeah. So, so that's why, uh, yeah, I'm a little behind on how, how, how that's going. But, but it is progressing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great. I mean, I did to be to be completely full disclosure. I went and did a because there were only three goats and it wasn't moving as quickly as I wanted. <laughs> I went in and did a brush cut for about half of it because the knotweed is up here and the little guys are down yeah, here yeah, and they're right. nibbling right at the branches. And I wanted it to get the regrowth that was shorter. And um, then I went away for a week and I came back and all the knotweed was uh, gone. So there you go. So an upset stomach. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> that. An upset stomach, right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I I owe you a fuller report on how the goats are doing there, but I I I I've been I've been rather caught up in this late stage uh permit Oh, well, we probably need authority for Ron or me or somebody to sign the I have a as well. Too. I know you need to review it before right. you sign it, but right. let's give Ron the authority to sign it. There you go. Yeah, I've reviewed it already with no changes to it. No, they've been changed a little bit, but not in any substantive way. But I'm, I'm a 
stickler for detail. It's changed. Well, so I can leave you a you, copy. No, I'm just saying if you yeah. haven't changed, I've reviewed everything that she already right. said. So you can sign it because you're here and you're, you have a signature. I do. Yeah. So it's all this is all within your budget, right? You got, you got money in your budget. All, yes. Yeah. yeah, I don't need that. If you can do it right now. You're on your way. Yes. <laughs> but I will make sure you have the revised. Yeah, like, well, the submitted one I like to keep. Yeah. Whatever you send okay. to the state. Yeah. And then I'll put in there, not leave by on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any new material on there. Excellent. Thank you very much, everybody. That was fast work. Might celebrate with ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad leaving because I know you have a lot of work to do. And as usual, let me thank you for the work that you do because I am seriously grateful for it. Um, when you watch other towns having a tougher time, yeah. uh, it's great that we don't have that. So yes, thank you. Not on wood. Yeah. Okay, well. Not on the okay, mic. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you, <clears throat> So let's see the 23 policy regarding leak filed homestead declarations from Kim. And she supplied us, and that's in the packet. That's what this is right here. We had um, the different bullet points of homestead owner shall declare ownership of a homestead for the purpose of education property tax. That's what yeah. Said. Annually, in honor before the due date of filing the tax return of extension, each homestead owner shall declare his own. Tax commissioner shall provide a list of homesteads to each town. If the property owner failed to declare the homestead, the tax commissioner shall notify the municipality. If a homestead is filed after due date of filing for a final tax return without extension, the municipality may assess one of the following penalties up to 3% penalty of the homestead, formerly non residential, rate is higher than the homestead education property tax return, or up to 8% of the non homestead rate. Lower than the homestead education property tax rate. If you fail to file the homestead on or before October 15th filing deadline, your property will be classified as non residential. You then may pay a higher of the two tax rates. The penalty and any additional property tax interest. And I don't think that's any particular change, and there are always people that fail to file their homestead exemption. It's sort of like that <laughs> does it for me every <laughs> somebody's gotta watch it. Yeah, that's exactly that's, exact, that's exactly right. And then when they and then when it, they haven't done it and it isn't deducted from their taxes, they come and they get all upset at you know at the office because well, I sign it, there's one blank here. That's so that's why I read that it says the town high park will charge a penalty of blank on the education tax on the property home that they already that's right. I can't. I don't know if Kim told me what we were going to. Was three percent? Yeah, I think it was three percent. Okay, we'll get to fill that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm, I know. That's what it was. Or it's a choice of the board. That's why Kim's asking. But it's, it's, it's been three percent. Yeah, it's been the lowest. Yeah. Remember the low option. Okay, three percent. Okay, so we're agreeing to three percent. There's a change thing on the bottom five, but it doesn't matter. I don't care. I just yeah. want to make sure that yeah. I mean, whatever. I know. Mine gets quiet. I'll come back next week and say, I wasn't here for this time. It's like a lightning. That's how that is. I got this one where I was signing so many things, but when I didn't have that amount of time to sign Well, they ought to give you a little bit of time. I can't carry that. Okay. <laughs> then the, the next is, and, and this is, again, Kim provided at home on my screen. I looked at it. The um, We hadn't updated our tax collection policies. Last time we did it, Kim was 15 or 16. So she shipped it to the town lawyer who, well, no, I've got that. Got it here. Um, who just made some suggestions for things to change, nothing big, you know, about it, just keeping things updated. 
and uh, I think there was a question. Is this positive? Here are the late filers. Over the early emissions. There is the error. There we go. Here it is. Although this this is this is uh, what the new a clean copy looks like. The changes that were I'm having can can you pull yours up on there weren't there wasn't anything I don't remember anything strike something they were looking at the yeah at the strike version. So the video. That's the problem looking at it, the desktop at home or something. It's big. It goes, yeah, that's right. It's right there. <laughs> what Justin's in, he makes some paper copies, right? Well, I know. I know. Yeah, no, we're a little busy today. We had a great meeting with FEMA. Hmm. Okay. So that is, uh, just go over some of the changes to the collection of current and delinquent taxes. So there's a strike version that Kim had included in the packet uh, purpose section. Uh, delinquent, delinquent taxpayers will know what to expect. And she crossed out, you will be treated fairly and will know what to expect. I think that's just a, it's a perception of whether you're treated fairly, so it's hard to put that in a policy. You could be treated accurately and feel unfair. So you can't tell somebody they're gonna feel treated, treated fairly. fairly. So I think that's a good change. Capitalizing the town, increasing the processing fee from 25 to 40 for insufficient funds, check bounces, and payments agreements. Uh, the existing sentence said uh, immediate tax sales. You just crossed off immediate because tax sales is more of a process. You can't define what immediate is, it's when it happens. Uh, the agreement shall, these are the agreements that she makes with anybody that's past the, the May date. Once you right. go delinquent, she offers a, an right. agreement. She, is, right. uh, she changed this sentence. It's a little blurry. I'm trying to read. The agreement shall remain in effect until the full amount of the delinquent taxes, interest, and penalty are paid in full or until the taxpayer fails to comply with the agreement whichever occurs first. So there's terms and conditions in the agreement, like keeping current taxes current, maybe as part of the agreement while you pay your old ones, those kind of things. Uh, failure to keep agreements, failure to meet the terms of the payment agreement shall result in immediate termination of the agreement. She just took out immediate again. Uh, she also deleted the second sentence of this paragraph. And what was deleted said within 90 days of termination of the agreement, the delinquent tax code it may initiate the tax sale. But she just took all that out because that's part of the process. <laughs> you do the agreement to avoid tax sale. You break the agreement, you go to tax sale. She, I, don't, I think she didn't, she didn't want to bind herself to a tax sale or even right. apply because there's other ways to, to come up with a solution. Maybe. Uh, getting to the end here. Uh, in general, collection proceedings by tax sale shall be initiated where multiple year delinquencies exist at $1,000 or more. She's adding the $1,000 or more part. And uh, that, that, that's high. So, yeah. well, well, well. Or more, yeah. Right, because it was at seven. Well, this is. There was no number before. I, well, I think it was 750 and this okay. came down to, I, again, Kim and I talked this afternoon, the, uh, because at this point you've got a lawyer involved in it. So they've got to go back and do the, you know, and they charge, I think it's 15 per cent. So, so on, on a, on a, on a real low number. And policy to say others. It does that okay? So okay, up to a thousand dollars. Okay, so it does say it. Yeah, once once you go into your delinquency and hit the tax sale process, all that stuff gets added to your delinquency. Your delinquency. Okay. Yeah. So the initial notice is going to be raw taxes, but if it actually gets to tax sale, so she can set up an agreement before tax sale, which doesn't include those legal fees. It's just her putting. Well, and she's also this first one is. 
delay the tax rate. Yes. Appreciate it. Uh, we had three or four for June and everybody paid. Yeah. That happens a lot. But, but we, we, have a, jump in. we have an ongoing that we'll go into executive about. Yeah. But the first letter that goes to folks from the lawyer, the lawyer is are not fees that are added to the bill. And that's why with the what they charge, Kim's like it you need to be at a thousand dollars or more that they owe, or it's not worth, you know, you're asking a lawyer to do a lot of work for, you know. Five dollars, and they just still do it. So that's why she took the took in talking. It's to good to have a. It's good to have a floor. You know yeah. what, what is that minimum? And, yeah. and she can triage it and leave people on there. The only negative to leaving people on the tax row is you get eighteen percent interest for the time taxpayers if you have that balance. So it's really not a negative. Um, and then you maintain your balance, your accounts by triggering the thousand and then you try to clear the over a thousand right. but that base could be 50 60 thousand you know something like that you're getting 18 percent off if so, you're getting anything if you're getting it yeah, like next change was uh when the delinquent tax collector initiates a tax sale with the agreement of the select board so again we're engaging the delinquent tax collector which is going to have a tax attorney which will have costs and that creates the bridge between the delinquent tax collector, which is appointed, and the elected select board. So everybody's aware of the cost as well as the process. Uh, the tax sale attorney shall be appointed for three year terms. And that's what we started doing two years ago. I think they, yeah. they wanted an appointment on their books. So the select board said, uh, David, David Rue, three year term, we'll keep, they'll remind us when that runs out, and then you'll have it back here for another appointment. Uh, she crossed out a big section of abatement because the first sentence of the section refers to state law. <laughs> but then the policy restated everything. So she deleted all that. Look at that shorter. Did another section. Oh, it's part of the other one. So that's it. Okay. All good. That's all I had. Yeah, there wasn't any again. No. <clears throat> the lawyer just sort of cleaned it all up for us. We need to vote on that. Yeah, yeah we need to accept the updated tax collection policy. We get effective today. Just add the last week, 22, 23 in there. Yep. Right. Keep us going for another five for you. Okay. All, all, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> you guys can change. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. We're gonna we're gonna take four and do an executive session. I don't. I, we can have a brief conversation if if you know if you guys have looked at. I keep um, and seeing the last is again it was interesting with Ron. You weren't here, so it would have been in the packet. But Ron, besides with his billing, is keeping track of here's so here's what the jobs are that he's doing. That's all those. Yeah. And um and I think that's just helpful in in uh, in writing a description for the job that we here's what we're going to be asking folks to do. Here's what we'll see what isn't getting done. It's you figure you're running about 20, 24 hours a week. Uh, 20? Yeah, 20, 20 to 23. Something okay. like that. But I figure. He's, he's running that knowing what he knows. Mm -hmm. But again, as we had originally thought, looking for a job around 25 hours. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know how we're going to advertise that. It would depend if somebody comes in with a fair amount of skills, you know, they'll pick up a lot of this fairly soon. But I, I don't, I don't know. And again, I, I just sort of think probably all five of us should be here think, talking about it because 
whatever we talk about, they're going to want to talk about yeah. it yeah. next week. So it's, 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 um, but would like to hopefully, so when you start September, it's not, but by the next, and maybe even take a run it for the next, next meeting, have a draft job description written up. I think I could probably do that with Ron. And see if that mostly you know how it how it works. And we'll see what happens. I notice a lot of people have I noticed a lot of people still advertising for road crews. Yeah. Well, and, and, and administrators and all sorts of things. There's a lot, yeah, I say a lot of local jobs. Yeah, yeah, looking looking for people. Did, did you yeah, they asked me for help on their flood. So it was interesting today at our FEMA meeting, yeah. Hyde Park is about a week ahead of their schedule. So I see the, it's like a parallel track, but it's helpful for me to see that there's big differences in FEMA people. We're finding that out with the Hyde Park representatives from FEMA that um, sort of work with you differently. Yeah. So if you ask the right questions, they kind of go down some rabbit holes for you to try to get more money. Yeah. Other people are, uh, have a feeling with Johnson are going to have more more structure, more rigid, and yeah. maybe not have those good conversations. So then I'll, we'll, uh, th there's no benefit other than FEMA has variable people that, you know, they have 400 people in the yeah. state and they all have to be told the same thing to repeat it. Yeah. So they always say we have to go to our superiors if there's a gray area. That's what she said a couple of times today. I can't answer you, but I'm going back to my superiors. Right. So, but yeah, that's that's probably under yeah, five hours a week, maybe or something. That's pretty small. But, but part of it also, they don't you know, Ron, Ron's, Ron's, Ron's been down this road before. Mark's been down it before. I've been down it before. So you, you, you got a trio of people that have been there, done this one. So you sort of am still dealing with 19. I wanted to say something today. To say, Do you know how know. long I said that? I went, now wouldn't it probably wouldn't be helpful. So I won't say, by the way, you still do we finally have all the money from 19? We, we do, except for the two. The yeah, that's, that's yeah. right. They're paying, right. Yeah, we so, got those you know, last so year, yeah. It only takes you four years to get the money to us. So why should we? Anyway. So, <laughs> but, but that has allowed us to work with them in a very different way and to get some flexibility from from them not the least of which is you know the flood plain at the bottom of of uh our favorite road they i think they're actually going to come through and pay for us to move that dirt and take the appointment so it's like there you go you know that's in, and they went up today to see it and the landowner, actually, he drove up from Massachusetts today because he was going to come to the meeting because he's like, God, can you guys please help me? Because, it, you know, I mean, the road just keeps washing down into his field and he keeps cleaning it up. And it's sort of, you know, we're all feeling this isn't this isn't right. But we got we got FEMA to agree with it. And they apparently had a great conversation with him out there. And he's like, yes, OK, I'm going to get this sorted out. So they got to go through all their change. But I would say it looks very positive. And one of the bigger things is, is there, we at least initially have them contemplating helping us upgrade that entire road up to the fire line. Hey. Yeah, that's right. You know, we're going to say, okay, let's, let's see what money we can get, what assistance we can, you know, we can get from them. Because it's interesting, we they learned. I told right, it was great because we they were able to have a conversation with us. They're saying, so about this class three and class four, and of course they work all over the country, right? And I go, I'm like, what is what is the class four road? <laughs> you know, because their view is if the town maintains it and and if you plow it, then it's your road and it's your responsibility to take it down. We don't care what you call it; it's your responsibility. So we're trying that route. Because we do take care of it up the fire. Yeah, they will get money for a class four road. But it's like very little. But she said, no, it's saying we're going to get it. Yeah. So and and they, they, well, they have done that in the past. Well, they will, what, for, yeah, they yeah. will to put the road back to its prior condition. Right, right. We're talking about a. We're talking about fixing. $200,000 type of project. Right. 
just leave it alone and let it go. Huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's the <laughs> That's an option. Yeah. We, we, we talked about the beginning of the meeting. We talked about that. Like, why does the town want to keep going, except for the fire pond, right. up these go paths that used to be roads? Why do you want to keep doing that? Well, you have three or four homes yeah. up there. You see the piece of the new citizen about Marshall there? They, they have a list. They have yeah. a hit list of, of short roads. There. Yeah, they have short roads that they're looking at. No. Nope. Taken care of. Okay, let's see. Eight winter salt. Like it's up six dollars a ton. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just that Mark was waiting for a second quote from Cargo, uh, which Barrett's delivers as the only other provider from South Burlington, I guess, or Shelburne, wherever their train drops off that salt. Um, we don't have that yet. I just texted him to see if he got it back, but. Uh, Compass, who we've done business with for three years or four years, maybe um, they have a opening, just like truck purchase over at <laughs> Allegiant. Can you let us know if you're going to sign up for us again? Can you sign that contract and get it back so you can you know, preserve your deliveries at uh, you know ninety? 9564. 9564 a ton. Tell them we will for 8938. I didn't go to 9000. Maybe. That's a lot of money. I don't know. Yeah. And who knows what the, what the cost will actually be? That's the other problem. So uh, eventually they're going to say we're full, which is what they always, the salespeople always say. Right. Um, right. It's still August. Whether the September select board meeting is too late or whether it's not, I don't know. Uh, Mark had been in conversation with somebody, so we just you know, they haven't published it yet. As a thing, what you should do is sit down with the other towns, full purchase, big big purchase, have a meeting with Eden, have a meeting while well, Eden don't do a sell anyway. Ricky Lewis uses very little, but I would meet Marshall Johnson, Cambridge, and, and start pulling the plug. And, you know, I don't know where them other people buy it, but. You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. There's a third supplier in yeah, yeah. northern Vermont. I don't, I don't think there is. No, there's not, man, because two boys sold that to Barracks. So that's why they're doing this, just like Clark Clark's did with the truck. Uh, yep. The international. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they they always send it. You know, they're going to try to drive the Vermonters out of Vermont, and I can see how they're going to do it too. Well, I can go back to Compass and just tell them that, that we don't have a competing bid, so but we're trying to get one as a as a second yeah. bid. I wouldn't tell that yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, they get they are on a regular dial. You know, say, like, hey, what are you guys doing? I said, well, meeting on the twenty second. Yeah, that's all I told them. But I mean, they so know they're only one cop. Look at wonder what states mean. I don't know that. That's what I. They actually published about this time. Yeah, the state. yeah when I have heard it, it. even if the towns all got together and started complaining to the state, you know, go to freaking Phil's daughter or something and say, "Hey, this ain't right. Why are they the, kicking us off?" It's the same conversation. Yeah, the same same thing as the trucks. Yeah. I think they they they're operating in the state's interest and somebody decided it wasn't in the state's interest to include all the towns because they're inflating the cost potentially for all the, the towns. So they cut the dead weight off from a good bid by dispatching with the towns. It's not right. But they used to bid with two different uh dollars too. They, they would have a town bid price in the state. They were just doing the bidding for all the towns. That's right. It wasn't that we were taking the state bid price, we were taking the towns. Oh, okay. We were just jumping on. They were doing it for the towns, and then they cut cut that out. They stopped that. So that was what, three years ago now, two years ago. So we have to go and do the quoting ourselves, basically, and what's one change, but you know. Anyway. That's an interesting question. I just I'll leave that open for now and just tell them that we're we just we're having trouble getting a second quote, but and then come back with whatever they want to come back with. Somebody will sell us salt this winter. I'm sure somebody will sell us salt. I think so. 
We have to go to Christ John there. <laughs> you can buy the 40 pound bags, but I don't get it. Did you ever sit in the back of the truck and throw salt? With your really? No, we had auger. It was 80 we had auger. I did that. I did that in, in Hartford, Connecticut, working for landscape. Uh, I sat in the back of the truck with a big pail of salt and just I, learned, I, I learned how to spread it with my hand with a little shovel. I did that. It's a really good skill to learn. When I lived on the back, I would, I would come down here and shovel a little pile in the back of the truck. If I lived in the truck, the truck yeah. <laughs> try, try to get an even spread, right? So you're not, you know, leaving a pile. Yeah. Right. We did that one time. <laughs> Alan, Alan, we walk and I, and Bill Moulton was driving the ton truck, filled it up with salt. We had to go down around Cage Valley. You couldn't even stand up. <laughs> so we had thrown salt down there. We were going down the Cage Valley for a while, and I was, he was going backwards. So we finally got down to the town garage. <laughs> but I have done it. Oh, okay, so we'll leave. We'll let that one go. We'll see what yeah. happens. Yeah. Okay. The uh, Northside Park Bike Fed Grant. Yeah. We applied uh, back in May, the annual program for bike bed studies uh, to bring forward sidewalk to pre-construction. Um, basically go to a 90% design so it could be bid and pick a project up in North Park. I guess we just must just say I'm bearing he says the curve on one of the things so, um, we'll wait. I think we got to wait. Yeah. 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 I don't, I would. Yeah. yeah. Um, Just my opinion. This is a scoping study for the uh, two, two segments that we were looking at Heath Lumber to the post office and post office to 100C. There was a third part that was scoped out in 2016, which was a river shore path. Um, kind of scoop behind the post office and running across a couple of properties. Those are none of those were brought to like a pre construction ready for bid. That's what this money will do. So the community will pick the number one segment, and then in a year or so, you'll get another presentation of yeah. preferred alternatives. And, and then decide if you want to make like a little bypass kind of thing to the sidewalk. Yeah, Mark, I talked to Mark about a uh, wide shoulder on Ferry Street so that he could plow it all winter. Yeah. That's low maintenance. If we end up with a separated sidewalk, then we have to maintain it, which yeah. is part of the grant construction now. You have to commit to maintenance mm -hmm. and tell the state how you're going to do that. Yeah. I, mean, I think they learned the lesson from the roundabout. So then that they get all the grants are conditioned with maintenance agreements. Um, the River Shore Path is the same thing. I don't know if they'd allow that to be seasonal. I think if you use VTrans money for bike ped, you have to have year-round maintenance. If you use other sources, you can get a seasonal path along the, along the river. So we're talking about two, probably under this program, two roadside type things, either something that I would guys can plow with a wing down or maybe a separate you know, volunteer effort to clean some sidewalk, but that's all another thing. Right. Another deal. I don't know if we don't staff somebody up there all winter for sidewalks. So probably not ready for that yet. So it may end up with a very short type of project, but even in that short stretch of Ferry Street from Heath Road to Route 100, there's stormwater, grade, slow driveways, okay. and houses. There's yeah. all sorts of yeah. things to deal with just to get another yeah. three or four feet on the south side or whatever. Yeah. A couple of houses right on the roads. Yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. But it's amazing how you can get five feet and you never thought it could go there. There might be a couple sections where you have a small retaining wall potentially, which is costly, but that's- yeah, would just make a nine foot road. Yeah, you could re reduce the lanes and then you can add less feet on the side. Yeah, you can shift the center line over. Anyway, that's what this study is all about. They're just trying to figure out what, what a- 11 foot lanes at 50 miles an hour would be as well put down. 20 foot miles an hour, 29 foot. <laughs> I don't think you can go to I know you can. <laughs> Sorry, the same impact. So, it, so it needs to be. Not, they, would, they would go to a lot of foot lanes. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't need a motion to, uh, to accept the grant. <laughs> Which one of you? Did you kick roll the ego next? But I think I'm up. 
Go Is ahead. it your turn? Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah go. I love making motion. Oh, okay. <laughs> Roll your <laughs> second mint. All, all okay, the favors. Good. 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 All, yeah. all the favors signify by saying aye. It's the match. Aye. Okay, anybody? The match is coming out of the... Uh, right, it's coming out of the side of the bridge. Well, that's not the other time. I'm saying if I discussed it, at least it doesn't mean it's last year's night. That's right. I just thought I'd bring it up. Was it good? <laughs> in case you were asleep that night. Is, that, is, there, is there any money left in that line item? It must be all right. It was... In the sidewalk reserve, is yeah. over 200, I think. Yeah. So you're committing about 100 and... One E between the rail trail and this one. And this one, yeah. So and then we do twenty five a year more in November. In November. Wow. Yeah. So you're right. okay. Showing the voters you're investing in the town with your reserves. So the Johnson, the Hyde Park and Johnson shared scanner. Is Justin here? There. He's not there. Um, he's going to use the recording to take the minutes later. Okay. Um, I know that the shared scanner, I've been watching the emails. It's, called, yeah. it's a large format scanner. That's yeah, like we're this, just about that. this big. It's a big printer. It, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Printer scanner. And it was okay. where it was I going know, to be living. Know, there was multiple options. Right. We had to go back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we, Carl Rogers, who's the interim town administrator, and Johnson and I have been going back and forth with all the details and responsibilities, insurance, and escalation, and the maintenance fees, and trying to cost out per the Johnson Select Board's recommend um, request the life cycle cost of that machine. We picked seven years. We ran the math. Maintenance fees go up a little bit higher under one vendor and they stay relatively lower on the other one. That made the difference, even though the acquisition price was relatively close. So, um, so where are we going to stage it? Is that everything? Yeah, that, that was the last thing yeah. that we were wondering. Yeah, so last John, so. Johnson, I, think, I think we could stage it halfway between. Not a yeah. We could roadside scanner. Yeah. Yeah. We could put it in the high school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so Johnson will do it first. They they have a backlog of surveys that is long, and and they want to catch up on it. And we only have an eleven, I think. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty caught up. Uh, Justin did check into the potential to move the scanner for a couple hundred bucks. You can actually move it to a new location if somebody gets scammed up or something. He was suggesting every year move it back and forth. And Carl and I were talking about that is probably not. But if a town had some particular need for the scanner, then you could consider spending that money to relocate it. But only in that it's sort of emergency type of situation, which we so really couldn't envision. Right. It's just a possibility versus no, it's it's well, locked well, in there. With all the we crew we got, we'd have to pay for it. It has to be it has to be set up into the server and connected to all the devices. So it's a little it's it's not one gigabit unit. Yeah, no. <laughs> it is one gigabit unit, but it's not the connecting with wireless speeds. And right. Yeah, you have to. It's the, it's the IT board. It's not moving it. Our we move our own. We have we have this exact container. Yeah, you could move it anywhere you want, but then yeah. you can't set it up. They have to come in and set it up. Right. And so it's it's actually creating a network. So it's like like this. We have an allocation. Yeah. yeah, it's all expensive to mm -hmm. actually have it there and now that we're with geese or whatever they, they do have it remotely. Yeah, so that's more of an option. It wasn't really, you know, we were thinking about whether there would be a uh, sort of a non starter because the towns weren't, we, you know, didn't we want to just stay in Johnson, but we put it in Johnson, we put it up on the second floor. <laughs> at least, well, at least eight inches above the first floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's on top of the desk. <laughs> so we did their time off at the TV. I think so. Yeah. Uh, it looked like yeah. to me that I don't know, but it looked like to me the fire department did. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. That's why a lot of, you know, if you go in the fire department, you see their, you know, their boots and all that stuff. They keep yeah. that, even if it's hung up, it's still down on their cap. So all that stuff got wet. When I went down through my daughter's hair, it looked like they were. I think in the first four or five feet or not, the first, yeah. Holy, holy. Yeah, so anyway, we have that and it's signed, we're set. So we need a motion to accept the. There's, yeah, the, the agreement part is the memorandum, memorandum of understanding, which uh, gets into everybody's going to pay for portage care and yeah. all that stuff. So if you're Johnson signed there, sir. 
yeah. proof that there's less nitrogen. What day? What was the yearly cost? Of like a year? The yearly cost is the base of this. Uh, so you know, like that slide. The yearly is seven eighty a year. Seven eighty for forty eight. Right, it's Johnson's right. scanner. Right, just the total is. Yeah. 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 Seven eighty a year. Yeah. Oops. I'm okay. All, 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 all in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Got it signed. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Let's see. Our uh, errors and omissions. I think that went down that way. Does it come back up here yet? Oh, here's an error. Yeah, here they are. Right. Yeah. This is the first one. So this is what the listers that we have added. This is what so this is what they do. So it must be they were like going through the books and found it. Well, and, and particularly when the first tax bill goes out, yeah. <laughs> you're stuffing envelopes and you end up going, well, that can't be right. <laughs> so between the listers and looking at going, that seems a little bit strange. Why are there four different tax bills going to and, and figuring out whether it's right? So they, that's, and then you get the listers to check it out and figure things out. The house was built in, yeah, okay. One of the houses was, was built that wasn't yeah, added, and right. the other was yeah. too much. It was it was only twenty two acres instead of wow. almost twenty four acres. Yeah. So we need to approve those. And look, we go. You guys can sign the back of that too. Yeah. I'll second it. All the favor signify by saying aye. Sure. Makes it easy, but make it easy for the notes, right? Yeah. Is there whatever. Sure. Yeah, anybody opposed? They made it stay in front of That's not much. Actually, that was that was that was uh, Deanna and then whoever Deanna's with. So see, there's another somebody else. You better put the date on it. Don't think there's no better than a date. Be that way. <laughs> There, well, I'll, 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 I'll find it when we need it. <laughs> oh, so you, you put no, I need to contact all these people tomorrow, don't they? Tell them thank you very much. Oh. What? Should button that up there. Yeah. You guys know we're here. That's what they're saying. You guys know what they're saying. I'm getting hung up on your. Stone's thumbs. Yeah. So did they sit? Could they say both of them? Yeah, yeah, one was the back. The other one was real bad. Okay. But, but they were, yeah. yeah exactly. Well, there's a good thing about being young and it's growing. So that's the better. Yeah. I can show you some pretty graphic photos. Oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah. But it's kind of a little wrong. I don't say you can pay for it. Had to put it back together. Oh, they're just pieces, right? It was basically that kind of part of the sun was holding. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's when you go, yay, having a good hospital for us, right? It was, it was a great thing. Yeah. Well, it was a kind of uh, It was great. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They're terrific. Well, I'm glad he's okay. How do you feel about splitting wood? It, he wouldn't go. Yeah, my parents had me there, which, like, he's not, he's not ready yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm <good. laughs> That was his cousin? Yeah. Yeah, how about his cousin? He, he yeah. I think he was almost just as traumatic. Oh, sure. Yeah, so I was was, yeah. yeah, yeah, they are. You know, you don't. My brother, my brother as well. <laughs> okay. Um, side so there. The interlocal assessor agreement with Johnson, and we're adding St. George. Sounds as though somebody else may be coming on too, right? Yeah, it's a lot of discussions right. for a while. <laughs> it's like dealing with select boards, you know, just goes back and forth. <laughs> But there is progress in adding more towns because people are running into the same situation we did. And now this is a, a option for people, which really wasn't interesting to select boards because it wasn't created yet. Right. The, the interlocal agreements are in state law, regional, like you can do it. You know, there's the structures there already because even the state legislature saw the need for cooperation years ago. And now we're sort of facing that. Uh, certainly with assessors. 
And when uh, Justin started looking at, you know, the other towns, he, he personally had an initiative to get to be a full-time job eventually. Yeah. So that's what the track he's on anyway. Right. Is to is to add enough hours where it's really just his one job, even though he's around four or five towns potentially. Right. So now that we have our listers, we don't we still list. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. 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 The board of listers is active, and assessment has to happen every five years, right? That's well. That's different. That's uh, the reappraisal is yeah is a contract only because of the way state has structured it. Okay. That's what the reappraisal reserve is building now. Is yeah. enough money to pay for those contractors to come in. Yeah. What is it? How many years is it? I can't remember. Well, 2018 was the last one, so we're on a track for probably 2025 or 26. Well, except we've been notified that we're we're out of compliance. Yeah, as most of the state has been notified that they're out it's of every, compliance. It's every five years, right? Well, that's the year. Ten was the old schedule. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was ten. Yeah, ten was the old schedule. Yeah. but this is when you're eighty-five percent. Is that right? Well, yeah. It, it depends well, on how much place to sell for, too, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, well, right. that's what is indicates whether how out of whack your grand list is yeah. between what it yeah. is. So yeah. most of the towns no, that that must be on here, right? Bill Selection Bill grant Bill regional. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the did we? Yeah. We did the errors and missions, right? Yeah. We have that one. Okay, yeah. we're on the error. Okay. It's a local first. Okay, let's let's. What do we what do we need to agree on this? We need to sign that. We've add, signed it. We're adding a statement. Yeah. 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 Somebody else is jumping on. So moved. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Now we'll get Ron can catch us up on the. We got the letter we had at last meeting, or we just got it. That when you're 85%. There's two factors that will trigger. Uh, one of the factors where the state's writing all these letters to people is this is the CLA number. So you have that, which shows that real sales are way higher than what we have assessed. You know, you've heard stories, right? Yep. So that after two or three years, those real sales start to affect that CLA number. So we were at 105 or something in 2018 when the when the new right. grand list first came out, and ever since then it's it's dive bombed. Um, so we're down in I think 70 something was the last number, 79 or whatever. So you get below 80 percent. With below 80, okay. I'm just gonna pull it here. But then there's the other one that we got triggered on was the COD which is the coefficient of dispersion. And that means that two similar houses are totally assessed differently, even if you even if it looks, smells, same. Right. Because one has had more activity, potentially more sales. Again, higher sales, but when you take those two houses, all of a sudden they're not equally and fairly. So you have two things. You have the market pushing, which is just an overall valuation problem. And then you have your like properties not being evaluated uh, enough to catch up with that either. Okay. So your neighbor, same exact house built by the same builder is not coming up with the same. Uh, yeah, that's right. Sales for 400 and you're, value, you're appraised at 220. Right. And so anyway, so we got, as I think most of the towns in the state are getting a letter saying that, you know, you're out of whack, so you need to reappraise. So the first thing you submit when you get the letters, yes, we acknowledge that you're right and we'll come up with a plan. And our plan is when we can hire a, a, appraisers, we will do it. And we're being told that they're at least three years out before you can get anybody to do the job. You better hire them now. <laughs> well, you just you just sort of getting getting on the line. But the good thing is by the time somebody's available, we will have accumulated enough money to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. so we'll be all right. So, good. No, whatever. Oh, now here's here's interesting. I'll slide this. All you really need is a little bit. You can go in depth here if you want. Is the cover page? What's this? So, well, this is because Ron is contracting with us now and doing the FEMA work. 
he very rightly said, it's interesting. I met, I talked with FEMA and they said, oh, that was a good catch on your part. <laughs> that he's not he's, well, <laughs> that he's built, but if you're, you once you get past your emergency, there, you know, you got to so sell how many people have bid on the job? Where did you look for other people? Yes. So we did the, you're right, that makes, that makes sense. So we did, um, we wrote up a nice ad and said, here's what we're looking for. Put it in the... <clears throat> Vermont bid registry. Yeah, the Vermont bid registry. And I had them send them to my house instead of trying to catch up with this. And I just had had Ron do a cover sheet for me as to the prices. And uh, after I got the first three, I just told Ron, I'm glad we have a contract because he's way underpriced. <laughs> and 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 what I what's interesting is is the people, but some of the you look at the names, some of the big guys are starting to spin off and either directly or they are spinning off doing FEMA management because they can see there's a future in that there's money to be had and you get, you know, I mean, if, came, something yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. If you, if you have a, this is happening to small communities, they don't have the capacity to do this. And your, your, um, and again, FEMA says that you, they'll, They'll pay for administration. They cap it out at five percent of the total amount of money the town gets, but that's going to take care of a good chunk of it. But one of those they had like their a, a clerk was a hundred dollars an hour. But if you looked at it, that was literally the person that's filling in the paperwork. You're going to pay a hundred and fifty to one hundred and seventy five per hour for the person who actually is doing the work. So you'd end up paying close to three hundred dollars an hour. To get the work done. So we're not letting Ron have this contract. <laughs> yeah. No, it goes through January. So what? <laughs> yeah, we're not doing any more floods. <laughs> what is it, this RFP or? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I just put out a request. And so what we have to do is pick someone. Yep. So I think I think it's exactly. fairly, yeah. <laughs> we're going with the best qualified and the lowest cost in this time, which is really getting to happen to us, right? And that time we, Double FEMA's here today, so we spent some time talking about procurement and all the. So even the contracts, two parts. The RFP is open and fair, transparent. You get three or more. That's their goal. And then the contract that's written includes the FEMA standard language. So okay. when, when we which do this contract, which wasn't part of the first contract, uh, it'll include this little booklet of stuff that I just got from FEMA today following the meeting. So by the way, whenever you write any contract, so those that, that language is in the um, DeRoche Construction Services contract yeah. for the two Brook Road and Centerville sites. And that contract ended up being, you know, half an inch thick. I'm going to try to do a referral thing um, with any future contracts, just so we refer to the guidance. And not yeah, necessarily right. have to put do it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So at least it's there in the contract, and everybody knows where to get it. It was about to read. I think the bit of process that was all part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and some of it's good, it's you know, good. discrimination stuff and not using FEMA money to go, you know, yeah. argue legislation. You know, it's kind of non arbitrage sometimes, isn't that? So that's what's going on with that. So, got a recommendation? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's stone shore, isn't it? <laughs> I think that's probably a good recommendation. <laughs> I, I forget the name of that guy. <laughs> that business. <laughs> so quick. <laughs> so quick to forget. Mr. Ron? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. We call him Mr. Ron. Okay. You want to second that, Rolly? I'm second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Hi. Hi. Anybody opposed? Your vote doesn't count, Ron. Thank you for your business. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I'll get that because I gotta notify all those people that um there are a couple that uh, they're really interesting. They're one of the smaller ones. Um the lesser it's, it's a it's a a woman down in the southern part of the state and uh, and she has a business partner. And they formed um, after the after the last one, and uh, saw there was a need for it. So they got into working with FEMA and developing it. And they now are on sort of like FEMA's list, and they go all over the country and internationally to deal with. So they just sort of started their little consulting business down in Southern Vermont, and they go all over the place now. 
Good for that. That's like, here's a. Better send them to Hawaii. Oh man, I, I know. I was sitting there thinking, oh, those poor FEMA people, <laughs> poor people in Hawaii, but those poor FEMA people in Hawaii. Oh yeah. What a what a horrible thing it's to have to deal with. What a terrible thing to deal with. I sat down the other night and watched a little bit of it. It's just. I just feel so. Oh, it's so bad. Emergency management guy. Yeah. Right. He died. No, he didn't. No. It was in a decision, and what I heard in his decision. I mean, turn the sirens on or not, or something. No, uh, it, it, it's not. I mean, we'll go after it. But yeah. 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 All right. Tough place to be. Okay. Minutes. Oh, the attack. Oh, sorry. Right. Regional, oh yeah, Richard said he'll do it. Yes, yeah. the Richard Plant, the Regional Planning Transportation Advisory Committee, Richard yeah. Pearson said he would do it for three years. He's terrific. Yeah. Now it's your turn, Raleigh. Uh, I guess I lost for both Richard Pearson and the three year term of the Regional Planning Transportation. Richard Pearson, I don't know, I don't know who that is. Did he live here? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. He was in here for both then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he's on the planning commission. Yeah, for a three-year yeah. term. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. That's what he says. Yeah. Yeah. Place his face. Oh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Anybody abstaining? Was he the guy that was on the DRB board and on the other bell? No. No, I don't know. I'll take a picture of him so I can see it. <laughs> right. Congratulations. You just have a turn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think you can vote on the next one. The minutes. No, um, that's right. We can let the minutes go. I like it. I like it. Make a motion to set the minutes at 8, 22, 23. Meeting. I've got to abstain. Yeah, he's got to abstain. It's just it's exactly right. Right. Yeah. It doesn't make three votes. Right. Yeah. On the next, yeah, uh, <laughs> okay. But we can do the warrants and the finance memos, yeah. We'll do them next time. <laughs> That's right. We can do the warrants, yep. We'll make a motion and stuff. Come all down there, okay. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Oh, yeah. Anybody opposed? Abstaining? Okay. Let's see. What else do they need to know? That that the that the culverts for the for the Centerville and Brook Road are getting here Friday. Culverts come. Yep, on Friday. So hopefully they'll be done. Culverts come. Yeah. Well, that when they get in there, it's temporary. Yeah. Yeah, the Wednesday Friday. Right? I'm guessing he's using it as a bypass. Yes. Yep. So hopefully that means not only that both those projects will get done this year, but that they'll be done maybe mid September, which would be really nice. Did we come up with funding for the second one? For, for, for. We're still waiting to hear from the yeah. So that call that call. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah. That, uh, that's that's why I understand. I anyway. hear now that project cover. That'd be good enough for Broco. No. No. We have to, <clears throat> because there's FEMA funding involved, okay. uh, we have to do the 10 footer yeah. arch pipe on each one. The storm water. 10 foot, 9 inches span. Yeah. Um, and we're realigning Brook Road just a little bit. Centerville staying almost in the same alignment. A little bit of a kick on it, but not much. Uh, they dug that water around just for a bypass. Yeah. Yep. I didn't think I would understand. The water's down here. The brook's coming down around like this and into the corner. I see what they did. 
Nice. Down in there. So I can do the work. Yeah. <laughs> I got a little bit real quick. Okay. You know, when, when you do the stream operations, you always have to submit them. Why, you know, why aren't we using our gravel? We're trying to save money. Or why, why are we buying that gravel at the center of the road? That was part of the bed. It's out, it's out of our hands. Yeah. 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 And I went into the, into the part of the bed documents. We would have put that in the original. Yeah, we've tried a couple times with even smaller grants to do a split between a contractor and the town guys, and it always creates grief. Yeah. One or one or other reason. Yeah. So unless the town's if the town is leading the project, right, and we have contractor help, that's different. When the contractor's on top and and they call Mark for an extra load, mm -hmm. it just gets really uh, impossible. And you start to, to help them. Your active fifty permit, we're, we're only alleviated. I mean. For our town versus one with the contractor. Yeah, the contractor yeah. under yeah, the contract right, can't right. use our gravel. That's right. right. It's not for right. commercial purposes. Yeah, right. It gets, gets, it gets what you want you there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I used to we'll always use our gravel over the Marshall. Yeah, but it's town products. Or it, 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 they never went really out to a bid or, or a state. That really fun. We, had, we had trouble. We had trouble using our gravel on the Depot Street sidewalk. Because it went fast, fast. No, no, because the the contract under the state said cannot use private, you know, not uh, governmental stuff. We had to get special permission to use it. Any of our state stuff have to be a, a, a. It was a loop. It was a process to get approval to use our gravel on a town project. We have to submit our quarry to I okay, Panache as well. We have to submit our quarry and they have to get pre qualified. Each one of our quarries have to be for each type of material. So, like, we're only qualified for demonstrating the three quarter shown. You have to pack the weird test, which is your angles, your rod. Yeah. yeah. So, all that stuff. Yeah. 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 And then they wonder why things cost. Yeah. yeah. No, this is, this is, and with FEMA, it, we change one thing on those plans and everything stops because FEMA, it's a FEMA project. So, we can't, at this point, we can't even second guess anything that's on that contract. Or else the whole thing comes to a stop. What was our percent match on that? Right now we're looking at 2.5. Uh, 17.5%. Uh, no, sorry, they changed the formula. So it's 90% FEMA, 7.5% state, 2.5% town. Yeah, so we're looking at. For two sites. Yeah. Yeah. So realistically, the town the town cost of the town that back in California that project of four hundred and something yards. The delta would have been four bucks a yard. Not worth it. Yeah. We would have seen pens change. Yeah, that's another reason why you, once these once these bigger projects are awarded and the federal government so heavily involved, all those plan dates and the certifications shift to the contractor. Yeah. Once we start messing with that, it, uh, it, it's almost impossible. How the, long? How long do they think that they're going to have that covered in and sucked there now? I don't. I'm. I'm not. I'm getting reports from the engineer and from Ron DeRoche. About Centerville trying to meet October 15th. October 15th. Yeah, so that's the goal for October 15th for Centerville. Brook Road, the way he's managing his crew and the way he's managing materials and the pipe delivery, all that stuff is, is like running right underneath it. If everything goes well, they could get to. If anything has a hiccup on Centerville, they still are going to try to do the October 15th for Centerville, but they may push Brook Road to September 24th. Yeah. Right. That's what the contract says. But yeah, not the preferred and the culvert, the culvert that goes into the center of the road is on its way. Yes, it's supposed to be delivered Friday. Supposed to be delivered right. Friday. Right. So that's getting here at least a couple of weeks before anybody thought it would get here. So that helps me keep some up. Yeah. I didn't think you'd get it that way. No, no, I don't. I mean, it really didn't. Good. Yeah. I know. It's kind of, uh, I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> if the planets keep aligning, we should stop talking. Yeah, that's what it's like. Uh, right. Whatever. They don't align often enough that it's, you know, it's okay. Yeah. Um, that's the spinner, though. Oh, well, they 
catch people up, or again, that kind of the Sterling view, the, hmm. the water permit. <laughs> so for about a year and a, year and a half or two years, I've been trying to get information from Sterling View Cooperative Community about where they were, putting it on them, on their compliance with the state stormwater permit. And all the three acre properties, there's three of them in Hyde Park, there's a few in Morrisville, have to comply with the current rules if they didn't have a permit by, I think it's 2010 or something. There was a cutoff time where any project before 2010, it's a rough date, has to bring their permit uh, up current, which includes construction of this stormwater stuff that was never considered back in 1990. Yeah. So my understanding of what's happening is that uh, when they bought the park, the owners there bought the park from Ken Harvey, they had some seed money basically from the sale to work on the stormwater compliance because Ken and everybody knew it was coming. At some point, the state of Vermont and the state legislature in the last year or two started to fund as long as you're playing by the state's timelines, the engineering work to come up with a plan. This was this we had a meeting last week uh, with Dubois King and Sterling uh, View people on the first cost estimate of basically a million dollars for all of their stormwater, stormwater work. And it includes stormwater, uh, stone basins on the side of roads, some exterior stormwater settling ponds, things like that. And now we're faced with um, basically getting approvals from the state agency of natural resources for that work. Somebody's already designed that. They've already, they've already got somebody designed it. Yeah, Dubois King is the one that has, well, has brought that cost to them. I don't exactly know. We're not we're possible. Well, it isn't process. right, super duper, and, and listen to the comment. It's not super duper involved. And, and once Du Bois was King was off, we all looked at each other and went, what because they hadn't yet sent anybody out to do little soil samplings and things. And where they had sampled is where's the soil's good. Most of that is good old Vermont you know, a foot of soil and 50 feet of clay. So that we question that how accurate that initial a million dollars quote is because when they have to do all that, dealing with all that clay, we think it's going to cost them a lot more money. But anyway, so they'll they'll come up with it and then they also follow through and help that, that community because they know that mobile home parks don't have that kind, those kinds of dollars, and we'll help them go look for the money to, to do the work. We've been a ton of these projects this spring. There was before the plate. They call the schools had to go through it. Yeah, yeah. U32 did one last year. You know, all the bunch. Sure, sure. We sort of walked away from the meeting thinking that the agency of natural resources and some grants were going to fund the project. Yeah, yes. Well, so so like, it says a million dollars, maybe it ends up being two or so. What but, they what they do is just build a center pond. What I'm saying is on the update their soil drains. The only thing the only thing that settlement pumps do is create mosquitoes and slow down the water oh, yeah. in the river. Right. But if not washed out over the years. I'm not I'm not got any rule. I'm, <laughs> I'm just a guy who builds these new pumps. <laughs> I just did what the U32 did. Standard water is not. The one at U32, they, they brought, they have three ponds outside of it. They brought the water, they built this new pond. That the water comes out of their parking lot, rather than go direct. It goes into like a low flow four bay and then it slows down the flow, goes into another hatch basin. And in that sense, it helps. We did that while we were buying the elementary school in Marshall. Well, I understand. I was not. I, I, I gotta go look at it. I put a lot of work. So we're not doing anything on the yeah. town side. We're just we're, yeah, letting, we're just because they're Sterling View is gonna work with Dubois King and apparently they're running through yeah. the state funding. I don't understand that one. It couldn't have had to be done, couldn't have been done through 20 years ago. You gotta do it now. Nothing's yeah. washed out down there, right? No, it's it's all about the state Statute. law. Yeah, law. 
Yeah, state law said that all these three acre sites, anything with three or more acres of impervious area, have to come come in compliance. That's all it was. It, was, it wasn't a, it wasn't anything other than a broad stroke, regardless of your concern. Right. Yeah. The, the, the number one funded agency developed another program, another law <laughs> statute. Yeah. So that's what they were saying. State laws requiring this. Right. You got it. Right. Right. You just got to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but if that opinion of probable cost changes or whether they're going to look to the town for any funding, then we'll be back for sure. But right. I haven't heard that yet. No, no, not, not at all. They, they, I, I mean, right. they aren't looking to us to do it either. They're just because it's a town and, they, and they're, you know, like, okay, so we got an idea. And of course, with Mark doing, wanting to do some work up there was talking with him because saying, you know, he's not going to, if you're going to come in and tear everything up, there's no point, in, you know, you got to do some work up there. There's no point in doing it until you figure out what you're doing. So yeah, he's in one, touch with him. One of the biggest problems here. What would be on that same file? Be on the same file. You just, you see that? Over there? Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, oh, this yeah, there was a little. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of, one of, well, one of the causes was we disconnected a stormwater pipe from the garage that used to go there. We disconnected that two years ago when they put the uh, oil water separator. So now that water runs to the side hill over here. Where you can see new erosion on this side, but it goes into the side yard. It's not going over that bank. So that may be just the parking lot runoff at this point, but it used to be double. It used to be parking lot and, be. and a pipe. Yeah. Because I walked it when we were looking at people children yep. out looking at that cross pipe out here. The cross pipe, yeah. But they never did nothing with it. It's rotten. All right. Okay. Cool. What what we need is I think that we need a brief executive session to talk about number four. I have two quick updates. Oh, okay, quick updates. Two quick. I just want to read from the Title Thirty Two that talks about the reappraisal because they get okay. it for you. Uh, if a, if the state determines that a municipality's grant list is at a common level of appraisal below eighty five percent, which well, is pretty high, it used to be eighty yeah. percent. They increase it to 85. We one we one we're just done with reappraisal, we're at 100, 105. Right. It doesn't take very long to get to 85. Right, right. So the 10 year, if you want to look at you know cost benefit, the 10 year was based on an 80. And now we've got the market stuff and an 85 forcing a lot of these reappraisal orders. Or above 150, which generally doesn't happen. That would be a depreciating yeah. market in the depression. Be there. Yeah. The second factor is the coefficient of dispersion greater than 20. So if everybody is zero, that means everybody's equally assessed. As those disparities go up, you get to be five different, 10% different, 20. Yeah. So that's how that. And who monitors this? There must be some. It's an annual report. Is a program or something. Yeah. Uh, PBR produced. Another one. <laughs> no, PBR produced an annual report. Okay. And then that comes out with these orders eventually. If somebody needs a job, sure, because it goes it goes uh, on the sales of properties in town. Right. Who's being here? Property valuation and review. They're the ones that bring all the sort of the notices. So our specific notice when Hyde Park had it, you know, issued was only on the COD because we were above twenty percent. Our number for. Um, the CLA was 76 and the COD was 25. So we failed both of those, but for some reason they wrote up the order on the COD. So I, I don't know what that was about, but our actual. If you do it, you we, do we it. lost twice. Yeah. yeah. So you know, <laughs> that was one thing. I just want to make sure that you had those, right. the 85 and the uh, and the 20. I know we were failed on what we're working on. <laughs> uh, this is just a quick, really quick snapshot. I tried to get a one pager which was interesting on the FEMA disaster process. I see that. You had it, you gave it to me. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that, I just updated that because I had a meeting yeah. today. Oh. 
So I took some more information from today, just walked you through like day one through the day zero. Okay. Uh, so if we're reporting on FEMA claims, you'll will be in one of the it's a, it's a chronological type of list. So when you're looking at it, we've had the disaster, which was number one. We took emergency protective measures, which Mark and the crew did during those first 72 hours or so. Mark is working on number three still, didn't make sure all the, the, I can read his daily reports. He took them all, but now I have to go and review them. We've notified the town insurance carrier of our loss. We have to have a denied claim in order for FEMA to, to reimburse. Um, I did the preliminary damage assessment uh, weeks ago when it first happened. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, I sent that out. Uh, we also submitted the request for public assistance, which is another step. And that's the one that goes in that triggered today's meeting. So this is a formal notice through the FEMA portal that we want help. You can deny help and not submit the RPA, but generally the town is going to submit that type of request on a couple hundred thousand dollars in damage. The exploratory call we had last uh, Monday, which was the introduction to our program manager person, which was Destiny Dykes. And then we had the recovery meeting today, which is step eight, where she actually came to Hyde Park with six other people. Oh, right. with the, whole the, whole, the whole table was practically full with FEMA in the town. We, Jennifer was here. Mark was here. Did they go around to the sites? Uh, their, their site people three, did, yes. Three of them are site, now, um, site assessment team. They went out with Mark. I think Mark was working until almost six. So that's why he, he was, do you really need me to come? I said, I can text you. I need you. And the rest of this is now to come. The rest of it's to board. Yeah. 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 Just because I know you guys are, are going to hear pieces of it. Sometimes it gets really confusing. Yeah. So I thought that would be helpful just for just brain count. Yeah. That's all I have. We did, we did. No. Okay, right. Then we need to go into executive session. They moved, they seconded. We're going into executive session. him enforce the delinquent tax and mortgage agreement that she has with Michael Bartlett. So okay. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody no. abstaining? Okay. <laughs> now we can go home. Now we can go home. <laughs> 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 <laughs>